There are a number of youth programs in churches that are sort of like one thing that is done, and it's almost separate from the whole life of the church, where we we relegate the youth to you know the basement, right, <laughs> to go meet and have pizza and all that good stuff, while real church happens at a different time in a different space. How do you get a whole congregation to buy into, hey, our youth are the today of the church, are relevant, and have just as much to teach us as we do them, if not more? Um, it's kind of uh, just gleaning the lesson we learned from how we, uh, and, I, and I talk in my tradition because I'm more familiar with my tradition, um, we did with women. We used to have women day. And so on this particular Sunday during the year, the women did everything in the program. <laughs> they, we even had a woman who was a speaker isn't that special? or preacher. <laughs> yeah, isn't that special? <laughs> uh, 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 but now uh, when we came into our own and we accepted our faults in regards to that, women do all kinds of things. And they do them not on a particular Sunday. They, you know, do, you know, we may have an emphasis as we do on breast cancer or uh, emphasis on women or emphasis on children or youth or this is children's Sunday, youth Sunday, but they're intricately a part of the life of the ministry. Hmm. That's key. Yeah. And I think when, and again, particularly um, uh, in Project New Generation, when you're building and aligning the team, that's one of the things that the team wants to work out and be critical and address. How do we integrate them into the life of the community, mm -hmm. not on a particular occasion, not just when they have a project or they didn't develop the play, but how are they a part of the regular process? Um, uh, we play this out uh, symbolically at my church. Um, uh, we don't really have a Sunday school, but we have what we call youth church, uh, well, Judas Army. Uh, Executive Pastor, Pastor Geraldine Brown leads that. Um, uh, however, though, youth church does somewhat simultaneously happen during the, the regular worship. So we have two worships, 8 and 10. But they're there from 8 to about 8.40 or so, mm -hmm. and then they come back to be in the regular worship with mm -hmm. the pastor. While they were in Judas Army, whatever I'm preaching at that Sunday, we don't have a lectionary, we're not high church. Lectionary, where well, I publish my sermons like in a month in advance, so Judas Army know where the sermons are going to be and mm -hmm. the scripture text, etc. They spend time engaging all around or something around that subject and text, and so when the children come back to be in worship uh, with uh, their parents, mm -hmm. uh, they and I, they, we all can engage one another because they are prepared as well as their parents have been prepared for the worship. And so they become a part of the worship. And so they see themselves uh, are welcoming visitors. They see themselves in the media booth uh, mm -hmm. doing the announcements on the screens. Yeah. Uh, they're very much a part of it. They see themselves teaching and assisting teaching mm -hmm. in classes and doing things as well. Uh, they see themselves in the kitchen when we're having breakfast. Mm -hmm. They see themselves as serving. They're intricately a part of everything that's going on. Uh, 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 they go in with their parents or the to they count money, they, you know, mm -hmm. everything. Uh, and so they have the full experience of, of the church. And it's not so that it's specifically narrowed on them on this Sunday out of the, uh, out of the year, it's mm -hmm. going to be Youth Sunday. Yeah, yeah. But it's Youth Sunday every Sunday. Yeah. And they're integral, both in their individual spaces, but also in our collective spaces. Sure.